everybody welcome to this blender quick tip here um, in this little tutorial I'm going to show you how to uh, export an image sequence out of blender for use in video editing software so like an image sequence is a, a bunch of I don't know PNGs attached to each other to form a full video and you can do something like this in Premiere and After Effects however if the naming convention of the images are you know, not like 001, 002, 003, et cetera. If they have a weird naming convention, then sometimes After Effects and uh, Premiere will fail to import them properly. So I'm gonna show you how to use Blender to import and export an image sequence for use in video editing software if needed. Um, so this tutorial is kind of directed towards people who don't actually use Blender for its intended purpose or don't know how to use it. So it'll be pretty step by step. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna go up here to where it says default and we're gonna click the drop down menu and go to video editing. All right, so now that we're at the video editing screen, we can add our movie strip in or our image sequence. So I'm just gonna go here to add image. Then when we get to the um, you know file browser, you just select where the uh, image sequence is at and I'm gonna use this one here now this one does have a proper naming convention and After Effects would import it just fine but I'm uh, just using it as an example so there's many ways to select it you can hold shift and select individually you can box select to select a lot or if the image sequence is the only thing in the folder you're using it's pretty easy to just press the A key and select all so we're gonna go ahead and add image strip and as you can see it dropped it in and when you right click to scrub through the sequencer you can see that it's playing just fine all right and uh, just real quick to prove that um, this will work for non-conventional names so this is from a camera so uh, my friend was doing a project where she was taking a bunch of images in a sequence and um, she kind of wanted to have them play back as sort of like a stop motion effect. But since the naming conventions of cameras, like it says, underscore DCO 893, that won't be picked up by Premiere or After Effects as an image strip very well. So just to prove that it will work, I'm just gonna sort of box select uh, like this and add an image strip. And as you can see, when I scrub through it, it does in fact play through it just fine. So I'm just gonna want to delete that out. All right, so now that um, everything is ready, we're gonna go ahead and do one more thing here is, select, is make the end frame the end of the sequence. So Blender doesn't automatically make the end frame the end of your first sequence like um, the other programs do. And it actually stops at about 250 right here. So this image sequence is much longer. So what we can do is we'll scrub through and uh, I'm, using the middle mouse button to scroll. But if you don't have one, you can use this uh, scroll bar at the bottom. Um, so we'll select the last frame here and you can do one of two things. You can come down here to where it says end and just change this end number to the current frame either by typing or you can actually just while you're in this timeline, you can't do this anywhere else, just only down here with the mouse down here, press the E key to set that to the end frame. All right, so now the end frame has been set. There is only one last thing to do before we can render this out. We'll go back up here to the video editing tab and we're gonna change it back to default. So then over here on the right hand side, you can see this sort of render tab. Um, and if you, and if it's not on the render tab, um, it's this camera button right here. So set it to this camera button and then all you really need to do is set the resolution. Um, in my case, it is actually 1920 by 1080, so I'll just leave that alone. But then you're gonna wanna set this to 100. So just set that to 100 so you get the full uh, pixel density. And if you need to change the frame rate, you can also mess with that, but I also don't need to do that. So the last thing that we have to do is set up the actual output settings where down here in the output tab, we're gonna ch uh, change the directory here to where you want the video to save out. So just click this file 
and I'm just going to throw this straight into my solid state drive and um, yeah that's I'm just going to delete it after this video anyway so I'm just going to throw it right in there so I'll put set to where you want it to go and then right here we're going to change this from PNG to under the movie tabs um, go with an H264 it's the best um, and then for encoding we're going to go to format AVI I, I'm not a big fan of AVI's um, MP4's and QuickTime's are pretty good I'm going to go ahead and go with the QuickTime and then that's about all you have to do then you're ready to export your animation which you can do by either clicking this animation button here going up to the top left corner under render and render animation or by hitting control F12 and as you can see it's rendering through the animation fairly slowly because it has to process it into a file but as you can see up here you get the percentage of how done it is and once it gets to 100 percent you'll be able to watch your video in its root folder all right and as you can see it is right here in my folder and you just click on it and it's uh, fully ready to watch so I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this quick blender tip and uh, found this one useful.